Good evening. I just want to take a few minutes here and uh, think about friends. Um, Sunday in our college class, uh, we were over in Ecclesiastes in chapter 2, and we looked at some things that Solomon talked about there. And, uh, you know, parts of Ecclesiastes can be somewhat downing as far as talking about the vanities of life and things that Solomon's experienced, and he realizes didn't really amount to much, didn't bring him happiness or enjoyment. But uh, read a little further, and you get to chapter 4, um, and down in uh, verse 4 in chapter 9, there's something that he talks about that is important, and there is value to, and that's the value of a friend. And we'll read in uh, Ecclesiastes 4, starting in verse 9. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm, but how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not broken. I've always tried to have a good circle of friends and have some common interest there. We didn't always, we weren't always 100% into the same thing um, all the time together, but we had things that we had in common. Uh, so I was better at things than them, and they were better at other things than me, and, and I see that as valuable and important, you know, to have things that you don't have to know at all, just know people who know those things. And, and that was something I valued in my friend group in college, and I, something I still, I still value. I was talking with Taylor the other night, and we were kind of talking about friends who had come and gone for various reasons, or new friends we have recently, and people, people freshman year of college that, you know, we graduated, and we weren't really friends anymore, and, um, you know, th different things that, that go like that, and, and uh, you know, just, just all those people we've, we've come across and, and been friends with, and uh, we kind of saw one common interest there that we were blessed to have, and that was... Most of them were Christians. Most of us that were friends had, had common interests and common goals there. And, and we went places where we belonged, and we tried to go places where we didn't belong, tried not to go places where we didn't belong. And, and having those Christian friends and circles made that, made that easier. Um, you know, of course, as, as friends, as best friends even, you have fights and disagreements and things you don't see eye to eye on. But, you know, for the most part, um, it was a great friend group. Um, you know, and, and I may not see them, I may, there's friends I haven't seen in three years, but I know if I call them right now, they drive however far I need them to to come help me out, and they'd be there for me. But I, wanna, I want you to ask yourself, what kind of friends do you, have, do you surround yourself with? Are they Christian friends? Are they reliable? Um, do you have those common goals? Do, you have, do, they, do they talk like you? Do you talk the same? Are there people that the talk ways you shouldn't know you shouldn't talk, and maybe, you know, they're putting thoughts in your head that shouldn't be there and, and words that shouldn't be there. You know, maybe, maybe they do things that you don't do and, or vice versa, you know. Uh, maybe they study the Bible better than you do, and they, ha they have a daily Bible study and you don't. I'd hang around them. Maybe they're going to encourage you in that. Um, maybe they're people that don't go to church every week, and you do. You can help them out. You can encourage them to be there more often. Um, hopefully you have some, share some morals. Um, if you don't share morals, then, you know, depending on what their morals are, they could, you know, they could steer you in the wrong direction. And, and hopefully you're, you have strong enough uh, morals and upbringing to, to overpower those things. But I encourage you to, to find those things that, uh, that you have in common there, and hopefully you're going to go in the right direction together um, in that. Secondly, what kind of friend are you? Are you, putting thing, are you putting in what you expect back? You know, if you expect someone to be there for you, you've got to be there for them too. You know, um, people call you and it's easy to say, ah, oh, no, I'm, I'm already committed to this, but when you're in their shoes and you're sitting on the side of the road somewhere broke down and you need their help, well, at that point, that's very important to you just like it is to them. So it's important to, to keep that in mind. Be reliable to those people. Uh, don't just say, yeah, yeah, I'll help you out any time you need me, and that time comes and you're not there. Are you honest with your friends? Honesty is hard to do sometimes. It's hard to be honest in the moment when someone asks you, you know, what do you think about me at this time? Or what do you think about this or that? Should we do this? And so I encourage you to be honest with your friends. Be honest in a nice way. There's, a, there's a, an easy, there's a nice way and a mean way to be honest. But, but be honest with those people. Um, you know, are you there just to have fun? Are you there when, it, when times are hard too? Are you there through family pains and changes in life and things that, you know, that don't go right or, you know, if they lose their job, are you there for them then? 
You support them then, or are you just supporting them when it's fun? Lastly, I, ask, would, I want to ask you, would Jesus consider you his friend? Where is he in your friend group there? Is he important? Are you living a life each and every day that reflects the love that we're commanded to show? Look over with me in John 15 and verse 12. Jesus says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one other than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all the things that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. So is he a part of your life? Or is he just a friend of yours that you call on when, when you need something? Maybe it's only been a Christian when it's the easy thing to do. Maybe you're just being a Christian and, and loving Jesus when, other, when, your friend group, when that friend group is doing that. I was kind of doing some preparation for tonight and looking at, at different things. and um, There's a lot of opinions on, on friends that you can find different places. But I came across this illustration, and it uh, made me think a little bit about some friends and, and things like that. And the story goes as this. It says, a man dialed a wrong number and got the following recording. I'm not available right now, but I thank you for caring enough to call. I'm making some changes in my life. Please leave a message after the beep. If I do not return your call, you're one of the changes. Maybe your changes aren't your friends. Maybe it's places you go. Maybe it's how you talk. Maybe you've been around friends that have, you know, steered you in the wrong direction in certain parts of your life. Maybe it's time for you to start, stop answering the phone to those people. People that call on Friday night to go out places. People that call on Sunday mornings to go play golf and you know it's worship time. Maybe it's time to stop answering that phone call. Um, so <clears throat> I encourage you to, to think about that. Um, Maybe, like I said, maybe you, you've been, you haven't been a friend to, to people and you've, you've been the wrong, uh, wrong example in people's lives and maybe you don't feel like Jesus would, be, would consider you a friend. Um, if that's the case, we'd love to pray for you. And maybe you feel like tonight's tonight you need to put on Christ in baptism. If we can help you with anything, come now, Suzanne, and sing.